Hey guys, this is emeek 77 from www.finalcutstudioschool.com and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about rendering. A lot of people ask me about rendering and um, I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. It's really complicated in some ways, in some ways it isn't, so try to bear with me. Um, as you can see, i got a bunch of clips loaded into my timeline here. Uh, one's an HDV clip, one's an H.264 clip, one's a Apple ProRes clip, and um, one is a DVC Pro HD clip, I think, um, 720p. And as you can see, all of them need rendered. This little red line right here above the timeline, the top one is for video and the bottom one is for audio. Now, as you can see, in certain spots, my audio is red and certain spots it's not. But my video line is all red. When the video, when the line is all completely red, this means your clip needs rendered. It's not gonna help. It's not gonna play back. When I play it back, watch what happens. I get an unrendered uh, screen telling me that I need to render it. Did you, did you hear the beeps? Let me play it for you again. The beeps are telling me that my audio needs rendered. So. Why does this need rendered? Why do all of my clips need rendered? Well, I have my sequence set to a setting that doesn't correspond with any of my clips. As I said, I have an HDV clip, an H.264 clip, um, a DVC Pro clip, and an Apple ProRes clip. Now, this is sequence one. Look right here. Okay, now if I go over here into my browser, right here is sequence one. Now, over here on the right, there's a these little... Let me, let me drag this out for you so you can see it better. Here's your media browser now. And this lists all your clips. And over here is a lot of information that is really useful. And if you scroll over, it'll give you your frame rate, your frame size, the, the frames per second, and your compressor. As you can see right here, here's my frame size for the HDV clip. Here's my frame size, 1440 by 1080 at 29.97 frames a second. And the compressor is HDV 1080i 60. And uh, the, the movie clip below it is a H.264 clip. Um, this interface clip here is an animation clip. And this Elliot Sanders is a Apple ProRes clip. Now, why do these clips need rendered in my timeline? Well, like I said before, if you notice, we're in sequence one. So right here is sequence one. Now, if I scroll over and look at the compressor of sequence one, I'll notice the compressor is a photo JPEG. So, the sequence compressor matches none of my clips. So, what I'm going to do is select my timeline. I'm going to go up to sequence, select settings. Now, under my generals tab, there is a QuickTime video settings for compressor, and it's set to photo JPEGs. Photo JPEG. Now, if you notice, I can go in here and click it and set it to anything I want. Now, if you set this compressor setting to match the compressor of your clip, you will not have to render. So, um, let me give you an example here. Let me um, change the sequence settings here, and let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so, I'll change my sequence setting to... Apple ProRes 422. Apple ProRes 422 is what I use for everything. When I edit, when I use, anything I'm doing in post production is Apple ProRes 422. I get high definition quality at standard definition file sizes. And then on my final output for YouTube, I will run it through compressor and change it to H.264. But as far as editing and everything else is concerned, Apple ProRes, it is extremely fast at rendering. And the, it keeps the HD quality at SD sizes. So anyway, that was a side note. I'm going to change it to Apple ProRes. Now you can see the, the compressor is Apple ProRes compressor. I'm going to say OK. Now, automatically, did you see that? Boom. A couple of my clips turned green. One turned orange. Now, if you see over here in my browser, my sequence is now Apple ProRes 422. And if you notice, my Elliot Sanders clip is an Apple ProRes 422. So when I pulled my Elliott Sanders clip down, which is right here, you'll notice the lines above it 
are completely grayed out, which means no rendering is needed. And why is no rendering needed? Because the clip matches this, the, the compressor of my clip matches the compressors of my sequence. Remember, go to sequence, go to settings, set your compressor to whatever compressor your clip is. Uh, if you have several different compressor types in one timeline, like two DVC Pros, an animation, and a ProRes, well, there's only so much you can do. Set the compressor to the setting that you have the most of clips. If you have three HDV clips and only two ProRes, you know, set it to HDV and you shouldn't have to render. But what I do is, I leave everything Apple ProRes 422. I leave my compressor setting to Apple ProRes 422, and up here in Renders Control, I go down to my codec. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people have it set the same as sequence codec. I change it to Apple ProRes 422. This will speed up rendering tremendously. So now I have my compressor set to the my clip setting and I have my render control set to Apple ProRes 422. Now I'm going to leave mine at Apple ProRes 422 because I use that for everything. But like I said, yours would be whatever setting your clip is. So now I have both of them set. And now you can see uh, still a few clips need rendered. The green is a preview, means you still need to render it before you export, but it, you're going to get full playback, almost full quality playback. The dark green clip, um, which I don't have any on here right now, it almost looks gray. Uh, that means it's full. It's, it's, it's ready to go. It's don't even need rendered before export. Uh, the orange bar means that you can play it back at at you know full res and everything it needs rendered but you might have some dropped frames if you have a red bar like I said it means it needs rendered if you have a yellow bar it's a proxy it needs rendered and if you have a dark gray it's a rendered proxy and we can get into all that later but now as you can see and when I change my sequence setting to the setting of ProRes since some of my clips are ProRes it went to green like HDV you won't have to render with Apple ProRes and stuff like that so now okay I've got my clips and everything set up my sequence is set to 422 or whatever my clip happens to be and my render settings set to 422 now I want to go to my little RT thing here my render selections and put my render selection on unlimited RT if I put it on safe RT you're gonna have to, to render a lot more did you see that right there automatically my audio went red I'm gonna have to render what the safe means is it's just letting you know to be safe we're gonna let you have to render everything you know um, so put it on unlimited RT the unlimited RT will help real-time playback and when I do that as you notice my clips changed back to color let me do it again safe it goes red from orange when I go to unlimited it goes to orange now you may get dropped frames don't worry about it just don't worry about your drop frames check the box to tell you that to not warn you anymore because when you export on, on final export your drop frames will not be there it's just dropping frames within Final Cut so you can have a play so you can see your movie playing back so if you have drop frames in play during playback don't worry when you export they won't be there so now okay everything's good but I'm gonna tell you a couple little things to help your render settings and speed what I have is here I set my playback quality to low now, if you want it to be higher, which means the playback in your canvas, if you want it to be higher, you can. But I leave mine set to low because when you export, it will autom automatically be exported at its highest setting. This is just for timeline and editing purposes. So I leave it set to low because the lower the res, the more real-time playback you're going to get. So with it set to unlimited RT, low, and the sequence setting set to whatever my clip is, this is going to be my best bet for not having to render. And as you can see, I can play this whole timeline back without having to render. So now I was talking about my whole always using 422. I always use 422 no matter what. Well, you're thinking to yourself, Eric, how do you use 422 if you bring in a clip and it's an animation? Well, we're going to use the Media Manager. I use the Media Manager before I start any pro project. What Media Manager does is it takes all your different type of clips and it converts them into one solid compressor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these clips I'm going to go up to file media manager 
and under recompress media I'm gonna change it to whatever I want to recompress it as I'm gonna recompress it to Apple ProRes 422 NTSC 48 kilohertz now it'll give us the original file size and it's gonna and, and the modified file size 